Welcome. Um, this is this week's handout. Week three patterns, relationship, and representations. This is quite a, <coughs> a, a difficult part to start with. Um, so let's start. Right. Um, First of all, we're going to do pa tables and formulas. So let's just read through the first part. Some of it is revision of, of grade 10 work. Patterns and relationships can be represented by using formulas, tables, and graphs. If you want to draw a graph, you need values from a table. In order to make sense of tables, we first need to understand how number patterns work. Right, so on the next pages, you will find the four different graphs that we will discuss. Um, first of all, it's a constant or a fixed relationship. This means that one quantity, one value, will stay the same no matter what the other quantity is. And this will give us a horizontal line. Now let's quickly go to the next one. See, this is a horizontal line. All right. Okay, a constant difference. This is, is a direct proportion. Direct proportion means the graph, let's go to the next page. This is a direct proportion. You see, the graph goes up, it slopes upwards. All right, let's go previously. Um, a constant difference, this is a direct proportion where the straight line will start at the origin. Origin, let's go to the origin. This is the origin, the point north north. Okay, um, and the line will have a slope. Okay, so it's a skewed line. It's not a horizontal line or a downwards line. A constant difference with a fixed amount. This is a direct proportion. Remember, a direct proportion. Let's go there again. There's a direct proportion. Um, where the straight line will start at a number above the origin. So this one starts at the origin, and that one starts above the origin, and this line will have a slope, right? And then an indirect proportion. This means that the one quantity will increase as the other quantity will decrease, and it will give us a curve. Let's quickly go to the next one to show you that indirect proportion. Here it is. Do you see? We have like a curve, but the indirect proportion can also be a straight line. But mostly we will get in real life situations, we will get a curve. Uh, but it means that as the number of teachers in this case increase, the cost decrease. Okay, do you see the one goes down while the other one goes uh, increase? Right, now this work um, uh, is done by a teacher called Caroline Kriel and uh, uh, she is a educational consultant and we would like to thank you. You can go to her website which is Caroline Kriel educational consultant shop dot blogspot dot nl. Okay. Right, so the first type which would be called type 1. You'll see in the exercises you'll get type 1, type 2, etc. In this relationship there is no difference. This means that the answer will stay the same, uh, the same amount all the time. Okay, I'll talk about the answer just now. It's a, it's a good word to use actually. For example, the school hires a 60-seater bus for the day and it costs him 10,000 rand. The company says they can travel a maximum of 2,000 kilometers and it doesn't matter how far they travel as long as it's less than 2,000 kilometers. Now that's very far. That is from Cape Town to way up to Limpo, the Limpopo province. It's quite far. Or how many learners there are on the bus, the, the price stays 10,000 rand. Okay, so this is the information in a table. If no children go, they will have to pay 10,000 rand. If 10 children goes, 10,000. If 20 children goes, 10,000. A, mix, a missed amount and then go on 60 children 10,000 rand. So finding a formula to work out the cost for the day will be P is equal to 10,000 and then you will have to add the distances smaller than 2,000 kilometers, the children less or equal to 60. So this is part of the equation because uh, you can't just put 100 children on the bus because uh, by law you're only allowed to put 60 children on the bus plus they can't travel more than 10,000 2,000 kilometers. Okay, so find the value of A. A is, yes, you get it, 10,000 rand. All right, so, and now the graph will, looks like, will look like this. Okay, so 
the cost is 10,000 rand, regardless of the amount of children. Okay, so this is a constant or a fixed relationship. Now, later on in financial maths, we will start doing break-even analysis. And then this might occur because this is something that, that, um, that uh, it restricts or it makes an easy point to break even. Um, for instance, let's say the one bus costs 10,000 rand and the other bus is 200 rand per child. So then you will do, okay, so 200 rand per child rand per child no children is not rand uh, let's say 250 then we can use this table um, 10 children will be 2500 rand 20 children will be 5000 rand 30 children will be um, 6000 rand 40 children will be 8000 rand no i'm lying i'm lying i'm lying, I'm lying. two uh, two two and a half thousand five thousand 7,500, 40 children will be 10,000. So then if we draw a graph here, you'll see as soon as you take more than, if you take 40 children, it's exactly the same amount whether you're using this bus or the other bus that does it, that charge you per child. But as soon as you take less children, it's less expensive to pay per child. But if you take more than 40 children, you will pay less for the 10,000 rand. Do you understand? So this is an easy graph to put um, into a, a, a situation where there's two graphs on the same a system of axis. Right, so the line stops at 60 because it's impossible, it's not allowed, you're not allowed to fit more than 60 children into a bus. Okay, next page. Number patterns type 2. It's a constant difference or a direct proportion. A difference means to subtract. Okay, constant difference. Yeah, the word difference. What is the difference between? A constant difference means that I get the same answer each time I subtract consecutive answers. I've never seen this explanation, but this is fantastic. For example, it costs 12 rand for a litre of petrol. How much will it cost to fill a car with, with a 45 litre tank? Right, so this is the table. No petrol, no money. One litre, 12 rand. 2 litres, so it's 2 times 12, it's 24. 3 times 12 is 36. Okay, so it will go on and on. Note that if I buy no petrol, I will pay no money. Makes sense, right? Yes, very logical. Now find a formula to work out the cost for buying a certain amount of petrol. Now you remember I said 1 times 12, 2 times 12. So every time you take the amount of litres of petrol and times it by 12. So 12 minus 0 is 12, 24 minus 12 is 12, um, 36 times uh, minus 24 is 12. So every time you just add 12. Um, but now the answer of B is not 36 plus 12 because see that the, it, the, the amount of petrol jumped from 3 up to 45. Okay, so find the value of P is 12 times 45. So that's 540 and it says remember the unit rand. 540 rand. Okay, so now this is the graph. If you buy no petrol, you don't pay anything. If you buy, okay, so now it's difficult to plot. So we can take larger values. 12 times 10 is 120. 20 times 12 is 240. 30 times 12 is 300 and do you see that it goes up in, in 20s? 20, 30, uh, 20, 40, 60, 80. So it's 360 is there. So there we plot the point. 40 is 40 times 12 is 480. So it's 20, 40, 60, 80, go across, and it's there and down. And then for 45 liters, it's 540. So there's 520, 540, go across, cross, cross, and there it is. Okay, so now that the line stops at 45 liters, you can put even put a round, uh, oh yeah, it stops. You can put just after that a round dot. That means the, the graph stops. The petrol tank, petrol tank can only take a maximum of 45 liters of petrol. Okay, the next one, Ty number patterns, type 3, a constant difference with a fixed amount, so it's direct proportion. For this type of pa pa 
so it's still direct proportion. For this type of pattern, you will always be given all the information in words. And then you have to write the formula and complete the table by using that information. Okay, so now here's an example. The school hires a photocopier for 1,500 Rand per month. And it costs them 50 cents, 0, 0,5 Rand, 50 cents, to make one copy. Find the formula for determining the cost after making n amounts of copies. So what do we have? We have 1,500 Rand. We have the variable C and N, and we have 0, 0,5. Okay, so now in words. The cost is the monthly rent plus the cost per copy. All right. So in symbols, C equals the monthly rent is 1,500 Rand plus the cost per copy is 0, 0,5, but it's per copy, so we copy. So we have to times it by N. That's the amount of copies that we make. All right. Now when we fill the table, if we make no copies at all, the photocopier just stands there. Maybe we have electricity outage. Um, we will have to pay the 1,500 Rand regardless. Okay, if we make 100 copies, we will have to pay 100 times 0, 0,5, which is 50 Rand, and then we add that 50 Rand to the 1,500, and that's how you get 1,550. 200 copies, 200 times 50 cents is 100 Rand, so 100 Rand plus 1,500 gives us 1,600. So 500 copies would be 500 times 50, that is 50 cents, that's 250 Rand. 1,500 plus 250 is 1,750. Here's the calculation. 0, 0,5 times 500 is 250 plus that to 1,500 is a 5, 1,750. But remember, I, I just want to uh, quickly emphasize here that in, in grade 10, we learned that you don't first go 1,500 plus 0, 0,5 and then times by 500. You first have to times the 50 cents by 500 and then add 1,500. But if you have a scientific calculation, a calculator. The calculator will automatically first do the multiplication before they add to 1,500. And then lastly, if you make a thousand copies, you go thousand times 50 cents is 500 rand. 500 plus 1,500 is 2,000 rand. Okay, so note that the school has to pay 1,500 for the machine for the month, even if they make no photocopies. So the machine is in the school and they have to pay rent for it. Even it's, for example, December holidays. That's probably a better example than having an electricity outage. Okay, so now the graph will look like this. Remember, from last year's work as well, a graph has a heading because we're working with maths in everyday life. And when you, for instance, have to uh, give a report or a, a talk about a certain thing, you can't just put the, uh, the graph on the screen. You have to tell the people, the guy that fell asleep in the audience, that this is what this graph is about. So this graph is about the cost of renting the copier for a month. That's great. So this is the cost. The cost will be uh, plotted on this axis. Remember, the bottom part of a table is called the dependent variable. And the dependent variable are mostly, 99% of the time, uh, plotted on this axis, on the vertical axis. The horizontal axis is mostly the independent variable and it's usually the top part of the table. Okay, so independent variable, dependent variable. Okay, so no uh, copies, 1,500 Rand. 200 copies is uh, 1,600. Now the reason why we didn't plot the 100 copies is because it's difficult to, to aim. Okay, um, uh, 500 copies was 1,750, so this goes up in hundreds, so 1,750 is round about there, and do you see, uh, there, and then 1,000, but if I only plot two points, do you know that it will give me the correct one, because if I link this to that, all the other values should fall and you can go and test 
all the other values should fall in the line because do you know that this line is the unique representation of this equation and this table. So it doesn't matter whether you plot all the points between naught and you can plot a thousand points or you can just plot the two points because if you have two unique points it makes a unique line. Right, this is just another tip. Right, a note, the line starts at 1,500 when you make naught copies. The line has an arrow at the end showing they could make more than 1,000 copies. Okay, so there's no restriction. Let's quickly go back. Do you see that it ends with an arrow? While this uh, previous one, the, it ended with a, with a dot because you weren't allowed to, uh, you couldn't put more than 45 liters of petrol. But this one ends with an arrow because you can make millions of copies. Right, number pattern four is indirect proportion or inverse proportion. Remember that for indirect proportion, the one quantity will increase while the other one will decrease. For example, a taxi company says it will cost 2,200 Rand to take a teacher to and from work daily. How much will it cost per teacher to travel to and from work by this taxi per month? The taxi can take a maximum of 12 people. Now, I just want to say something. This example and the previous one about the bus can have the same graph. If it is the cost of hiring a taxi, the graph will look like this. But now this one is not the cost of hiring a taxi. This one is about the cost per person to travel to and from work. Okay, so now it is a little bit different. So if one person goes on the taxi, they will have to pay 2,200 Rand, which is plotted there. If two people go in the taxi, you take the 2,200 Rand and you divide it by 2. Now, I quickly want to show you. 2,200 divided by 2 is 1,100, which is exactly, well, almost where the graph is. Um, it's, it's slightly out, but it's just because of the of the uh, technology. It is, this is an incorrect number. Now it makes me wonder whether the 3 is correct. Let's quickly check. Uh, calculator. Okay, here it is. Right, so if I go 2200 and I divide by 3, yes, that's 734 and this is a rounded. Do you see that now this one is not on the table and the reason for that is the value was incorrect. Okay, so uh, are not on the graph and the value is incorrect. Okay, qu 3 is 433.33, but we can round to th 734 rand. Um, because if, you, if each one pays only 733 rand, then they will, they will be short. The ta they won't have enough ta money to pay the taxi. If 12 people go on the taxi, it will be 2,200 divided by 12. That's a maximum amount of people that can go on the taxi. And we get around about 184 rand, which is here. Okay, so 10 people on the taxi, that's easier, that's 220 rand. Okay, so find a formula. So you take the 2,200 divided by N, and that will be the amount that each person will have to pay to travel on the taxi. Okay, what is E's value? 2,200 divided by 4 is 550. Yeah, which is there. Okay, so now this one is a slightly more uh, is slightly more important that you have each and every coordinate on the correct place because do you see that this is not a straight line you can't draw this with a ruler it's a curvious line and then this one doesn't fit the curve so now we can see oh maybe we made a calculation error so that's a nice way to spot the calculation because if we aim from the one to the next it will like make a little bump there in the graph so we can see that this is incorrect Right, number patterns, working backwards to find missing values. Right, I, I think we can probably break this up because it's getting quite long. Um, you can watch uh, the, the, the next part of the worksheet will be discussed later. Okay, so good luck. Um, enjoy doing the exercise.